Hey there, everybody, and welcome. My name is Rick Uchi here with Ergon Web, your home for old school Ergon reviews where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today's video is going to be a two part video. We're, today, we're going to basically focus on the Excite 4K Pro. This is the 5 to 20 model. And we're also going to get it set up here on our, our Air Arms. And the second video will be us really dialing it in here with the Air Arms. But today, I want to do an unboxing of this particular scope. Haven't worked with the 5 to 20 much, maybe once. So I'm kind of excited to get this mounted and see, you know, see the difference in what the higher magnification does. I think it's going to give me some better image quality. That's really what I'm hoping. When we get to the other part, when we dial this in, and we'll do a little shooting today just to kind of walk through the process of how to get it on target. But this is going to be set up primarily to do some pesting around the ranch. We've got a ton of mice, and it's just fun to go out and sit and then watch them kind of show up in the brush and be able to take those shots. So at night, that's what I'm hoping to do. So this is ultimately going to go to a ratting or pesting video um, once we get everything dialed in and set up. But before we get there, I wanted to kind of talk about... Um, when you get an Excite 4K Pro, uh, and I think the LTV comes with many of the same accessories, when you get this and you're taking it out of the box, what do you need to know to get it set up? What have they done to improve the whole system? Because I had, I've had, i been working with ATN for many, many years. I had the original Excite. And the big change from the Excite to this is this uses a standard 30-millimeter tube. So regular mounts work, but they actually include some really good mounts. So I kind of want to go through the whole process of setting it up kind of show you guys what you get if this is something you're interested in and along the way I'll tell you why I'm so excited that ATN's part of the part of the Ergon Wet family because their products are awesome I love using them and if you like recording or you know if you like filming or recording your shots your hunts or whatever I have not found an easier way to do it this is really from what I've used and I've spent a lot of money trying to figure this out uh, this is one of the best ways you can go all right so Let's go ahead. I'm going to take this off, off the table here for a minute so we can just focus on the scope. And then when we go to mount this, then we'll get to that here in a minute. So let me just take this off, and I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start with this. This is our box, obviously. Um, in here, we'll have the scope. We'll have, like, a little carrying pouch. We'll have a cable, some mounts, and other things. So let's kind of get into it here. We're going to just take it all out, and then we're going to go ahead and mount it on our gun. Um, come on, there we go. If you guys are interested in anything you see here, I will have links in the video description. You guys can uh, can you know, go down there, find them, and be able to pick it up. Okay, so this is what we got. This is the pouch, or the little carrying case I was talking about. And then we've got a sunshade, our mounts, our different style mounts. We have our illuminator, which this is important. We'll get to that in a minute. And then we have the scope itself. I have already charged this up, so we're good to go here. And then, of course, our manual. Now, we get this box out of the way so we can go, all the, go through all these pieces. So, the manual is fairly uh, stout <laughs> when it comes to uh, air gun accessories and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of data here. I would suggest um, that you go through the uh, go, th go, go through it, read it, so that you can understand all the various features and functions. Now, you don't have to use all of them, but if you want to use some of the advanced features like multiple profiles or um, putting in your, your crony numbers and the, your bolt weight and have it do automatic uh, bullet or pellet drop compensation, a uh, ballistic coefficient, you got to have all those numbers. Uh, this will show you how to make the most of those features, also how the Wi-Fi works and all that other stuff so that you can really make the most of the platform. It's not just an optic or an electronic optic. It is a whole shooting system that includes, you know, night vision, day vision, uh, color during the day, white, or I think I think they have different colors at night, either white or green. But it gives you the option to hunt regardless of where you are and whatever the conditions are and record those hunts and then make the absolute most of whatever you're shooting. So it really is more than just an electronic sight. They've crammed a ton of really great features into this product. Um, and then they've given you all the accessories to, to connect it. So if you buy this, and let's say you're going to need a, at least, you're going to have to have a Weaver or, or a Picatinny mount, you're going to be in good shape because it actually comes with um, a couple different ways you can mount it. Again, these are just 30 mil mounts. So if you have your own mounts that you like that gives enough clearance and everything to work, then you certainly can use your own. You don't have to use theirs. I think that's 
that was like a huge change to go from the original that I worked with to this model. Um, massive difference. I mean, that was, that changed everything. Uh, made the whole platform far more usable. That and the battery life. The battery life on this is crazy. I, I, I want to say it's like 14 to 16 hours, and it may be more than that. I'm kind of under, under guessing there. But it's, it's a lot. And from the time you hit go to the time you can take a shot is, I think, under 10 seconds. So it's, you can be in your blind with it off, hit a button, and you're up and going very quickly, which is pretty awesome. All right, so we got all of that. Okay, so I know we're looking at three different mounts here. And which, you, which mounts you use is all going to be determined by how it's going to mount to your gun. So a lot of times I struggle with getting the scope back far enough. And so if you use the more traditional mounts, which would be these two, then that's it. That's as far as you can go. You're not going to be able to move this back any further. But if you go to this mount, you see now, even if your rail is way up here, you can actually scooch this way back and get it further back so that it's far more comfortable. Ergonomically, I mean, for me, I got pinched nerves and stuff. I mean, that's, it's uncomfortable. I don't, it's, it's a pain in the butt. But if I have to crank my neck in such a way where it's uncomfortable, I pay for it, like, for days. So it's important for me that, that everything is as ergonomically comfortable as possible so that, you know, I'm not in agony for the next two days after I've done a shoot. These mounts really help you get that accomplished. The idea that they, that they include this offset mount is huge because now you don't have to go buy it. So it just has everything. The front mount has um, Picatinny connections or Weaver connections on either side, and that is for our illuminator here. The illuminator does come with a set of batteries. I would certainly invest in like a multi-pack or to Amazon and just buy them a lot. If you're going to use this a lot at night, you're going to run your illuminator. You're going to, you're going to you're going to go through these. So just pick a bunch up. You can buy them in bulk packs. That's what I do. And that way you've always got batteries. Just keep a couple, maybe keep a couple in your, in your travel bag there and you're all set. Um, these are the CR, um, one, two, three A's. All right. So here's our illuminator. I'm not going to install this today because we're just going to be shooting during the day, but the way this works is it's going to attach and I put it on the right side. So my scope would be like this be on the right side. That allows me access to the focus here, or the parallax, and the zoom without this interfering. It does then get in the way of our charging and our SIM card, but I can usually get in and out without having to take the illuminator off. So I mount it on this side, but if you would rather mount it on the other side, perfectly acceptable. If you get a different set of mounts that, that are not these, as long as they have a weaver, you know, accessory rail, you're all set. You can run this illuminator. Now the illuminator is adjustable. There's two screws here that provide tension. There's a little, oh gosh, there's a little roller ball or something in there. Best I know to describe it. There's a little something in there that allows you to angle this left, right, up and down and then tighten it up and you're all set. Again, we're going to do a, a night video and we'll use this and we'll do a, a, you know, getting ready to go ratting kind of a video and we'll get this all set up. We'll show you how that works. And I'll use my infrared camera that we use for the expo and you guys can see how you can adjust it and get it really dialed in. So we'll do that, but that'll be another day. Okay. So now we need to grab our air arms and get this mounted. So let's do that. Um, it does come with some tools but I'm gonna use our fix-it sticks because I find them more useful. Now, this is gonna go up front. Okay, and then this is gonna go in the back. I think, I think we're gonna to need the, to use the offset mount, but let me just double check. I'm gonna go ahead and just walk through this, so if we do like a time-lapse or like speed it up, you guys get the idea, we're mounting a scope. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so here's where this offset mount becomes really important, right? So it's possible that I could mount this regular mount here and have it be back far enough. Um, but if I want more flexibility, then I already have the right tool in the bag. And for me, I know I'm gonna probably want it back further. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this guy. This gives me 
a little more flexibility to move it forward a little bit. All right, this gives me a little more flexibility and how I'm gonna position this. So I got a little movement just on the rails and then I'll have a movement within the scope sliding back and forth as well. And then I could, I could move this even forward if I wanted to give myself you know, more flexibility in just shuffling the scope back and forth in the rings. But th them including this is, is really huge. I, um, it's hard to describe how cool that is because it really stinks when you can't get your scope in the right position. And again, for someone like myself who struggles with stuff like a, you know, back issues and a pinch nerve and all those other things. It is no fun when you're trying to shoot and it just hurts. You don't want that. And this really helps uh, make things a lot nicer. So thank you, ATN. <laughs> Go ahead and finish this up back to the uh, time lapse or speedy Gonzalez version. And uh, then we'll get, to, we'll get to doing some shooting. Okay, so we are effectively about ready to start doing some shooting here. A couple things about the scope, let me turn it on. Power button's here, we'll just walk through the buttons, right? So power button's here, your zoom is here, your focus here is your parallax focus, um, sort of that's its function, so to speak. This is your um, viewfinder focus. So like a regular scope, it actually is very much just like a regular scope. You have your viewfinder, which is your reticle focus or your, your eyeball focus. Then you have, this is zoom, okay, instead of the zoom here. And then you have a parallax. So where you would like zoom in and focus, this just has a focus that just gives you the focus you need on whatever distance you're at. So you have all of these different, these different features um, just like you would on a regular scope. We're gonna turn it on and when you, push it there's a little click you'll hear okay so that is pretty good actually as far as the distance goes and you have eye relief just like you do on a regular scope um, it, it works just like a regular optic I think the thing that made this so appealing to me versus the others that are like appendages on your regular opt or regular scope and everything and they're way up here or whatever I mean, they'll certainly serve a function if that's what you're using, you're happy with it, cool. I wanted something that I ran just like a regular optic. I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to hold the gun special. I could just use it. That's what this gives me. So to me, that's awesome. Okay, so we are way out of focus. I think we're about straight. Yeah, that looks really good. So I'm gonna just tighten this up. I'll tell you that looking through this versus like the three power, it's a big difference. Um, I'm looking at the hundred yard target and I could shoot that without any, without having to zoom in. When I zoom in, I go to 20. Um, yeah, it's a big difference. I mean, if I was going to do hunting anything past 50 yards, uh, I definitely want this. Um, okay, that's good. All right, so this is pretty much set. Now, the one thing I'm getting a notice inside the scope that I need to calibrate the compass, which is something you have to do on a regular occasion um, or semi-regularly. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. Um, it just I didn't tighten it down all the way for that reason. And I'll do the calibration. And usually the calibration is fairly straightforward. I'm gonna try this, hopefully it works. You're gonna spin it a bunch of different directions. So first thing we do is just 10 rotations. Nine. Okay, and then we're gonna rotate it this way. And then we can do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. All right, now we'll take a look through it. Hey, we got a compass. Okay. 
So that's, that's, how, far, that's how hard it is to, to calibrate the compass. Okay. All right. Okay, so one of the first things you'll want to do here is once you're sort of on, um, you've got your battery indicator and your you know, Wi-Fi indicator and all that other stuff. I'm going to go ahead and install our little micro SD. That goes on the side here. Just clicks in. Um, some people may be curious about weather resistance on this. It is like dust and damp sealed, so like if it's drizzling and that kind of stuff, it's not going to trash your scope if it's out in those elements. You don't want to submerse it, obviously. It's not waterproof. <laughs> but um, yeah, it can take some harsh conditions, so it'll be fine. And there's little rubber covers that keep your uh, SD card and your power plug safe. Again, you know, you don't want to take this and... Um, yeah, you're not going to go underwater with it. All right, so I need to go set up some targets, and um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get this zeroed in. I'll guys, I will walk you through the one shot zero setting, or how all of that works, and um, yeah, then we'll put it on paper and see what we can get. I've got eighteen one threes and fifteen eight nines. I want to see the difference, um, and we'll go from there. And I'll kind of talk through some of the menu options that you have to. Unfortunately, I can't really show you the menus. You just I'll just walk through them, and if you have one of these scopes, uh, maybe this will be useful. So, all right. So let me go. Uh, let me go uh, get some targets, and I'll be right back. So we are 50 yards out, and focus nicely. Okay, I can see. The bullseye on that's relatively small, and the crosshair on this does not completely obscure it. So, I mean, given my ability to hold still, <laughs> it should do really well. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is change the reticle. Right now, it's just a red duplex reticle. So to do that, you're gonna go in the menu, go to the wrench, which is one to the left, and then you have all of these options. You're gonna go all the way to the right, well, back one to profiles and zero and go to the current one which is this is where you can actually set up different profiles and stuff um angie really does that a lot and angie i need to maybe have her do some videos on like the process to make that happen i'm more of a put on one gun and leave it kind of guy but she uses hers across many many different guns so she really uses that whole profile thing she says it's super easy to do so maybe i'll get her to do that for a grip video or something Okay, so I'm going to go down to zero reticle. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that yet. Let me back up. Nope. Okay, so we're going to exit. Discard changes. Back. Okay. I need to go down to... Is it display, maybe? Let me go up. Oh, here it is. It's under display. I apologize. Go down to reticle style, shape, and we have a bunch of shapes, including we have a, um, they have one that they added, which is the uh, uh, first focal plane. Um, you don't film in that. You can't see it when you're filming, so I don't know. I mean, it's almost distracting when you're filming. So I'm just going to go to one of my favorites, which is a circle dot, and then I'm going to change the color. Right now it's red. And you can go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, gray, and darker gray. I think green, I like the green. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Okay, so before we take a shot at anything, we need to make sure our card's formatted. So let's do that real quick. Um, we're still in the menu. So one of the options is photo video. And it says format SD card. So we're going to do that. Um, I recommend always formatting the card and whatever you're going to use it in. So if maybe that card came out of a GoPro or something, uh, when you put it in a new device, format it with the device. That can save you some headache. All content will be deleted. Yes. And I may need to move this back just one notch and we'll see. Format successful. Okay. 
So I think what I need to do, because the SD card's showing up red. So I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on. Okay. Because it was red, which normally normally means it's not going to read the card properly. So I just preempt that. While that's rebooting, I'll go ahead and get our magazine ready. First shots I'm going to take are going to be at the dirt bank. And I wish I could show you how this the single shot zero works, but I'll describe it to you. It doesn't film. When you, when you switch to that, it stops filming. So I'll record my shot so you guys can see the results, but I won't be able to actually show you the, the change. I believe I've done that with the LTV. You actually can see it. So I believe I've done that in the past. All right. So we're running the 1813s. We're on high power. Okay. Our compass is showing that we need to calibrate it again, but that may clear up just by use, using it. Our SD card's good to go. It's blue instead of red now. Um, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is just start recording. Now to record, this is one of, this is beautiful. You just push one button. <laughs> and hey, we got numbers counting, which is awesome. We're recording. I'm gonna take a shot at a rock. You guys will see it. So I'm low left. So the way it's going to work, I'm going to go out of here, stop the recording. I'm going to go to the settings, go over to profiles, go down to current, zero reticle, and now I'm going to put, there's two reticles. There's my green reticle, and then there is a white reticle. The white reticle you leave on where you were aiming and you move the green reticle to where you hit. Now this isn't going to be perfect because it's not on paper but that's about, I hit about two foot low, foot low, I don't know, low. So we're going to save and exit that. Okay, let's see how we did. It's going to get it close. Okay, so I'm going to I think we are, yeah, cock, and we'll start it. I'm going to aim for the same rock. Uh, peg the rock. <laughs> so that is why, that's awesome. I love the one shot zero. Now let's take some shots at our steel target there. There we go. I mean, I, uh, I don't think that could have worked out better. <laughs> That was pretty awesome. So we're 50 yards out. A little to the right. Should have painted my target. Y'all can see I'm not 100% on. This is an empty shot. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop the recording. That's, that's it, guys. That's as easy it is as it is to set this up, to use it. We're good to go now. I will, I mean, the, the compass is still showing that I need to calibrate it, which I'll just pull it off and do that. It may take a couple times. I don't know why they're finicky that way, but I haven't really... I turned this on like once before bringing it down here, so it may need to acclimate to our location. I don't know. But I've had others do it, and then they start working fine. So anyway, uh, and I really don't need to know which direction I'm shooting personally. But anyway, I'm going to run a mag on the target out there, and I'm going to zoom in. So when we zoom in, we lose... It gets pretty pixelated, but I can actually see that target really well. The other thing I want to do, I'm going to do, um, I'll do five shots on with the uh, 1813s. I'm going to move over to the other target. I'll do five shots on the 1589s. One, two, three, four, five. 
and I guess we'll see what the difference is where they hit because if it's significant enough, I'll need to adjust the scope. If I can just Kentucky windage it, that'll be fine too. Um, but I would probably want to run the Hades uh, when I'm hunting. So we're going to use the left target. Let me start the recorder. We take some shots here. Okay, a little to the right. Really pretty today. I don't think wind's a problem. Okay. Okay, I don't think I cocked it. Let's take another shot here. Oh, I did. Last shot, I guess. A little breezy. All right, so that's five shots. Oh, no, no, that's four shots. Here's five shots. Okay. Okay, I might have pulled up a little high on that one. Okay. Let's go ahead and load the Hades and see where they land. Since I'm going to be running the Hades to hunt with, I would imagine, I'll probably, if they're way off, I'm going to want to get those dialed in. So we may do that real quick. Uh, and then our next video, we'll probably look at different distances to see how to handle that. Okay. Right target. Oh, yeah. If we can get a few more like that, I'll call it a day. I think we'll definitely go with the uh, the Hades. It's hitting a teeny bit high, which means I don't think that's high enough to matter really when it comes to uh, mice at different ranges. But I think what I want to do on my next video is we'll shoot this at 25 yards, we'll shoot this at 50 yards and see where the difference is. I'm not going to adjust the scope and see if I'm going to be able to just use, maybe switch to the mill dot scope. I don't necessarily want to use the first focal plane, but I can. So we may just do some shifting with the different reticles and see what they do. But for now, that's going to be it, guys. Um, I, I don't use ATN enough personally. I know Angie uses it. She loves it, and she does a lot on our channel with it. But after the expo, again, and this happens almost every year, between the binoculars, which are awesome, the thermal, which is awesome, this guy, which I've never used, well, I really haven't shot the 520 on camera before, so I maybe have looked through one, but now shooting it, it's definitely better than the 3 to 12 uh, if you're shooting longer range. Gives you more precision for sure, which is awesome. But this guy is, is just very, very cool. So I'm pretty excited to see what I'll be able to get with this for the next, gosh, several videos, but we'll be doing more work with ATN for sure. And I'm going to be getting the thermal set up for some coyote hunting. So, um, yeah, all in all, just a great, great set of products. If you guys want to know more, we'll have links in the video description. So this video is really brought to you by Ergon web and, uh, ATN optics. So thank you, ATN. Um, and also, um, uh, air arms and JSP pellets and predator JSP pellets. Hi, Joe. Uh, make sure I say it right. But yeah, no, this is, this is a lot of fun. We're going to have fun with this setup. I'm looking forward to it and stay with us because we're going to reset everything and we're going to do another video here and we're going to be shooting. Um, yeah, we'll be shooting at 25 and 50 yards because things, yeah, diff distances change. I want to see what that, how, how, how this handles, um, you know, that distance difference. Uh, with what I may need to do out in the field. So we'll do that next, and we'll do some more shooting here with our air arms. For now, guys, this could be it. This is Rick Euser here with Airgun Web, your home for old-school airgun reviews, where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.